Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name's Ruan and this is my YouTube channel, The Yorkshire Sew Girl. Um, and welcome if you're completely new. I've had a little flurry of new subscribers. Um, so yeah, hi. Um, I basically just talk about a load of toot, um, but also about my sewing journey. So I talk about what I'm gonna make, what I have made, and that's pretty much it though. I'm not one of those YouTubers yet, maybe that has a lot of valuable content unfortunately I will forward you on to people that I know that have got all of that but um yeah if that's kind of what you're after then forget it with me because it's never gonna happen I don't think uh. so I'm a bit overdue with this video um and this video is going to be all about what I made in January so I know we're nearly in the middle of February uh things caught up with me slightly but I thought if I do that today, it might go on a bit this video because I like to go into a bit of detail with each of the makes. And I actually made quite a bit in January. Oh, yes, I did. I'm actually a little bit impressed with myself, which probably means that February will be lacking in uh, productivity. But anyway, um, yeah, so I've written everything down. I'm prepared because my memory is like a sieve at the minute. I don't know if anybody else is the same. I don't even know if I can blame lockdown here in the UK because... I'm not so sure it is actually that. I think I've kind of been this way since I've had kids. Simple as. It's like there's just too much going on in there. And if I have to put something in there, something has to drop out the other end. So, yeah, I can't remember. As they say in Yorkshire, me ask from the elbow a lot of the time. So I've written it down. So if I'm looking down all the time, you know, and I'm not a, a proper news presenter on the television, I do apologise because, uh, yeah, I'm not very good with all that jazz. So I'm going to stop waffling. I'm just going to get straight into it. The first thing I made, and this is probably a little bit of a cheat really, because I made quite a lot of it in December, but because I didn't finish it in December and I did probably the last third of it or so in January, it's kind of slipped into this video. But the first thing I made, oh God, I missed your head, oops, there we go, is the Five Mood rear jacket. So this is it here. I will try and insert some photos. God, it's a so professional when I do this, aren't I? I'm like, hello. Um, I will put some photos in so you can see it properly and see me wearing it. But yeah, I've admired this pattern for quite some time and I just saw some amazing versions. Um, and I was really after some sort of lightweight, oversized, well, they call it a shacket, don't they? But I mean, that is not, that is not a nice word, is it? Shacket. Um, so yeah i wanted to have a quick go on it i wasn't sure how i was going to get on with it so i bought and I, and I had a vision for cream cord in my head for some reason and i went on to the minerva website and found this really nice cream cord fabric sorry it's really really sunny outside which is incredible considering the snow all over the ground um so it's a bit it's a bit bright in here but anyway um and it was in the sale. I think it was about six pound a metre. So I picked up a couple of metres to have a go at this. Um, and the good thing about the Minerva website now is you don't have to order in full metres. You can order in, I can't remember if it's in tenths or quarters of a metre. So if you've got a specific project and you know exactly how much you need, I think it's brilliant because you're not having to pay the extra money. And then you're also not having the excess because I have a big guilt thing about having excess fabric and you know when you've chopped it all out and then you've got all your scraps and I'm having dilemmas over it. What am I going to do with all this? So it's all been stashed at the minute and I know I think I've mentioned in one of my other videos I'm going to do one of those poofs. Another random word, poof. I'm going to do a poof and put all of my scraps inside so that I have no guilt. So that I can cleanse myself of my scrap guilt. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, so I ordered, I, I ordered the pattern online, printed it out. Um... You can get them in the magazines, in the Fibre Mood magazines, but you have to trace them all out and everything. And I was just interested in this one pattern. So I don't think it was expensive to buy the PDF direct off the website. Um, and then I think I got it printed out. Yeah, I did. I got it printed out an AO copy at Fabricate in Murfield, who do a really good service. And I always go with them, even if I, I don't really I haven't done any price comparisons, to be honest. But even if they are more expensive, I'd, I like to support kind of local if I can. Um, and size wise, let me think, I should have gone for a large, but it's extremely oversized. So I went for a medium, which fit me absolutely no bother. 
um, whatsoever. Now I made some adjustments to it. I'm going to stop holding it up now before my arm falls off. And I haven't even got the patterns out ready ever to show you. How bad am I? I'll insert photos, that's what I'll do. Um, yeah, so, should have been a large, went for a medium, fit me absolutely fine. I did shorten it massively though. I shortened it by 10 and a half inches. So this pattern goes right the way down to your calves. And I didn't really want to go that far this time. I just wanted to kind of see what it was going to look like. So I chopped a massive amount on it. Bearing in mind, I am five foot nine as well. So you can see how big the actual pattern is. Um, I forgot to lengthen the arms. Don't know why. Always lengthen the sleeves. Always. I've got monkey arms. Always, always do it. Put it all together. Tried it on. Ah, what the chuff's this? <laughs> like up here so what i did is i recut the cuffs so these have got really mega deep cuffs um and yeah they should only be about half of that but i needed to add a couple of inches on so that's what i did and i just added it onto the cuff now the cuff construction is a little bit weird you have to get inside it to pin it all down and everything and my machine even with the little bit off technical term bit there you know at the bottom that you pull off if you want to do sleeves this would only just go around it there was no movement whatsoever um so i just constructed it um like i would do a jersey cuff inside out bish bash bosh thought it might catch a bit on my clothes on the inside not at all and i suppose you could actually top stitch it down as well if you ever had a worry about that so i just changed the construction of that um right so there was a few things though that I might change if I was to do it again. I think next time I'm going to go for a longer version. There will be a next time because I did really like it. Now it tells you to do a certain distance on your top stitching, um, which I did. But if I was to do it again, I think I would do a narrower top stitch. And the only reason for that is because of the pockets. Oh, again, the light's shocking, isn't it? But can you see there's, you know, like too much flap? flappiness too much flappiness for me so i think i'd go a little bit narrower next time now you know me this is plain i love a bit of animal print or a bit of color so i decided i was going to do a little bit of animal print so i had some binding which i put on the pocket and some um fabric that's a little bit leopard printy as well on the bottom of the pockets and i also did the same on the collar but and there's a but here when I came to bias bind the bottom, because that's how you finish this article of clothing off, I'd lost my bias binding. No idea. Don't even know where it's gone. Been through my scrap bag, been through everything. Gone. Vanished. But I had just had my order from Laura at the Specky Seamstress with her amazing bias binding. Oh yeah. So I used that instead. And this is the one that I used. And it's made in 2021. So I thought that was rather appropriate considering I was just finishing it off at the beginning of January. So that is how you bind all of the bottom of it. So I use that instead. So it's absolutely fine. And there's a little bit of bias bind in here as well on the collar. If you can see it a bit better there. So, yeah, I would, I think, lengthen it next time. I'd like to go for a softer fabric this time. next time. This is a little bit stiff and I wouldn't probably interface as much on the collar. It's almost a bit too stiff, if you know what I mean, which is fine and it doesn't look bad or anything, but I think I would lessen up on the interfacing. I'm not so sure this fabric really needed it, but I keep seeing in my life a long checked version of this. So you may see uh, that in my plans at some point. Okay. And the other thing is, <laughs> okay, I forgot about this. <laughs> Right, so I put this on my Instagram account and people couldn't work out what I said when I said, um, spot the mistake. So I shortened it a lot. I mean, I shortened it a significant amount, didn't I? And what did I forget about? The pocket bags. Hello. Hello, what's poking out of this curved hem here? Yes, my pocket bags. So unless I've got my hands shoved in them forward, you can kind of see see them a little bit hanging out and nobody wants baggy flaps do they less said so 
just think about that if anybody decides to do it and they want to shorten it watch your pocket bags right next thing I made wasn't for me <laughs> miracle and um you might have seen in December or November I can't remember what it was I made some pajamas for my boys and I picked up some really nice fabric from first for fabrics um and the, a lot of people have made me laugh about this actually I'll tell you why so it's this little jumper that I've made tags not iron down the little tag that says your mama made it um yeah lovely fabric from first for fabrics i've had a couple of jerseys from them that i've made some kids clothes out of now and they are really really nice but loads of people said that they wanted to buy this fabric because they thought it was cherry bakewells and i see it now not lion's heads <laughs> but cherry bakewells i think we've all been in lockdown too long and all we want to do is snack and we just see snacks everywhere even lion's heads are now being turned into bakewell tarts Oh, speaking of which, I could just eat a Bakewell tart. So, yeah, so this pattern is the Made By Me sweatshirt. Um, I did it in a five to six. Now, my little boy's five in uh, May and it fits in great. It's a tiny bit big, but I prefer it that way anyway. At least we'll get some life out of it. And I just finished it off with some black um, cotton ribbing on the hem, on the hem band and the cuffs and the neck band. Um... Yeah, I don't know whether I'd shorten it a bit as well next time if I was to make it. And I've also got on a fabric to potentially make bottoms again and make it into pyjamas because I kind of think it looks a little bit like pyjamas. But my little one absolutely loves it. And that's all that matters, isn't it? So, yeah, nothing nothing to report on that one exciting. Right, next. So, the next thing that I made was my Megan Nielsen Jarra sweater, which is here. And I made it in this gorgeous, and when I say gorgeous, I mean gorgeous, um, fleece-backed sweatshirt in from Fabric Godmother. I think I bought the, the pattern and the fabric from there. I'd seen loads of people making loads of stuff out of this. A lot of Billy sweatshirts and things like that by Tilly and the Buttons. And um, yeah, I just love this deep forest green colour so I decided to do everything in it I didn't do contrasting bands or anything like that now what I've done is I bought this originally after seeing Kath from Made by Kath Crafts jar of sweaters um and she did a tight the tied version and I absolutely loved it and that's what I bought it for I was like that is what I'm gonna do um and Kath had got a bit of a hack on how to change the tie so that you didn't see the inside of the fabric and I was like that's it that's what I'm doing anyway started having a look on Instagram and uh, yeah crazy I just could not make my mind at what version I was going to make because I think there's four different versions so I ended up eventually going for the dip backed version and I'll put some photos in again of me wearing it but so it's shorter at the front and longer at the back and I absolutely loved it now this version normally has split sleeves as well so like a a larger sleeve but I went with the cuffs because I'm all about the cuffs at the moment I'm all about the cuffs, about the cuffs. So that was such a good make. I really, really enjoyed making that. It was dead easy. Instructions were really good. Um, yeah, dead happy. And I think what's nice about that pattern is the amount of variations that you can make. So I know I can go back to that pattern, pick a different fabric, mess about with the sleeves or how I want the bottom to be or have a roll in it. They do one that's like a high neck as well or have the tie on it and probably make... I'd, you could probably do a dozen different tops with that pattern and not repeat the same thing, if that makes sense. So what did I do with this one? I I made a size down, so I made a size 12. Now, my measurements were actually between a 14 and a 16 in that pattern, but it is supposed to be very oversized. It's drop shouldered, oversized. Um, and I'm really glad I went down to a size 12 because when I looked at the finished measurements, I was like, yeah, I can get away with that. Um, so, yeah, that's what I've done. And I would probably stick to a size 12 as well if I was to make it again, because um, I don't mind oversized unless I was doing a dramatically oversized jumper. I would just go I would go with the finished garment measurements. So that was the first thing I did. So, yeah, I did view B with the A sleeves, view A sleeves. I increased the body by one and a half inches um, and that's come up just about right for me, I think. I probably could have got away without lengthening it, to be honest. I don't mind things a little bit cropped. That doesn't bother me too much. Um, 
and I extended the sleeves by two inches but the sleeves actually on that pattern are really long anyway so I probably could have got away with just adding an inch on I might if I make it again um take an inch off actually off the two inches that I added because it does you know like crumple up a little bit here I reckon and I, I, would, I was pulling it up a little bit so I think next time I might just have it so it's increased by an inch rather than two definitely recommend that though I think that pattern's really really good and I will be using it loads hopefully in my wardrobe going forward next thing is what I'm wearing now which is the Tilly and the Buttons Billy so I've made the jumper version with the poof sleeves at balloon sleeves um but i decided i wanted to just make the dress version with the straight sleeve just to kind of see how it came out now the jumper that i made before um i made in a size six and they are pretty much my measurements to be honest um turning the buttons i, I find really good for sizing because their measurements waist to hip proportions are in proportion with my body measurements which are always good so I'm not very often in a different size for my bust than I am for my waist and my hips um so I went for a size six on the jumper and I and it fits fine and it's there's no problem with it but I do think it could do with being a size smaller so I decided to just go for it and I plumped to go down a size in the dress and I thought are you gonna be regretting this Rua because of the old hips but I don't regret it at all, actually. So this is, I've got it on today. I'll just nip round here a bit. Can you see? I'll put photos in as well. So this is my Billy dress with the hem band at the bottom um, and just the plain sleeves. And I made it in this absolutely gorgeous fabric that I bought from Andrea at Beyond the Pink Door. So it's like a blush pink with like almost lime green orange pink and terracotta splashes in it that sounds awful when you say it out loud <laughs> but it's beautiful and it's fleece backed and it is so comfy to wear but it's also nice because you don't feel i don't feel like i'm laying about in my scruffs i feel like this is a pair of leggings whack it on and i feel a little bit more made up but i do think you know where it lies on my shoulders the fit across from my bust and everything is a lot better in a size five so i think what i'll do is i'll trace my jumper pattern back out again in a size down and maybe have a go at that as well now i know a few people have said that they think that the neckline is too high up now with my jumper it doesn't bother me at all um but with the dress, I do understand what people are saying. So when you sat down, it's kind of pulling because you, you, your bum's in it. It's kind of pulling on the fabric at the back. So it does ride up quite high. Now, it's not particularly bothering me, I must admit. But I can understand what people are saying. And I, and I think some people have scooped a little bit of um, measurement out of here. Just, just taking it down a centimetre or so out of the neckline, which... I think maybe if I was making the dress again, I might think about doing, to be honest. Um, just so that you don't have that, that feeling there. Although it's not particularly bothering me, but I do understand what people are saying. So, yes, yeah, so I reduced it down to a size five. I didn't lengthen the dress, which is unusual for me um, because I'm a giant. Um, but I didn't, I didn't do it. And I think it comes down absolutely no problem on me, the, um, the length. So happy with that but I did increase the sleeves by two inches and this is a little bit like the Jarrah they're lovely and they fit me fine but actually when you put them like that can you see there is excess volume in it and I tend to end up hitching them up a little bit so I think again like on the Jarrah if I was to do it again I would have a look at maybe taking an inch back out what I would like to do next is I think I would like to make the jumper again with the normal sleeve head here but with the balloon sleeve bit at the bottom so merge the two sleeve options on top of each other and have a go at that so I think that might be my next thing in regards to when I next make the billy so yeah really would recommend this pattern really enjoyed it I've made the jumper I've made the dress and I will make make it again no doubt about it so worth the money okay so I told myself that I wasn't going to buy any more new patterns and I wasn't gonna have my eye turned and what happened 
True Bias released a pattern called the Marlowe Sweater and all went to pot. And um, yeah, I started seeing some versions come up immediately on Instagram and I started panicking. <laughs> I needed it in my life. So I went on and ordered it. I think there was a discount on it in the first week of it being launched or something like that. That's how I justified it to myself anyway. So I decided to, I'd also got the pattern for the True Bias Hudson pants. And obviously we're all wearing loungewear a bit more, I would say, at home um, at the moment. Or slouch wear, as I, I kind of said in my video last time. And that, that wording seems to have kind of hit it off with some viewers. Um... So I wanted to have a go at making some joggers and I thought, you know what, the Marlowe sweater with its oversized look, so it's called a sweater um, because it's from the US, but for us in the UK it's a cardigan. Um, and I thought it'd be really nice maybe to pair the two. So I thought what I'll do is I'll make it up with some fabric that I've got out of my stash, see what it's like, and then I can always make it in um, fabric that I've put purposely purchase for those patterns if that makes sense so first up I made the Hudson pants which are here again I'll put pictures in and I made them in this blue mild jersey that I got in the sale from Samantha Claridge studio and it is gorgeous it is so soft it's just got a lovely amount of stretch in it and it was an absolute dream to work with. It's like a loop backed um, fleece on the back as well. So it is so comfortable. Um, I wasn't sure if there would be enough stretch on the cuffs because I read a lot of people said that the cuffs are quite tight fitting. So I was a bit unsure as to what this fabric would be like on the cuffings. So I decided to just go out some really beautiful soft blue jersey fabric that i'd got from fabric fabworks sorry in dewsbury once to make some nice t-shirts with um so i decided to use that as a bit of a contrast so i've put it on the pockets and these are really nice pockets to construct actually and i, and I think this little detail here puts a nice little edge on it i used it for the waistband and for the cuffs um and it was the first time as well of doing um some casing you know for the tie and um i read somewhere um, from a lovely lady on instagram who'd made loads of pairs that instead of buying the cord get some shoelaces who cut the ends off two of them tie them together and then thread them through and it's all done for you hallelujah i love a hack like that because i'm lazy um so i did everything according to the instructions and i finished it off with some shoelaces no one will ever know other than you lot that I've uh, just divulged that to and you put little buttonholes in the waistband here so because of the success of that my husband is now demanding some true bias Hudson pants for himself and there is they do do a men's pattern and a kid's pattern so I'm quite tempted um next month to potentially purchase them and then we can all have matching sweats in our household I'm sure my kids will love that so then I made the Marlowe sweater. Oh, let me just talk through what size I made. So I made a size 14 and I lengthened it by four inches. Yeah, four inches because of my long legs. Now, there's plenty of length in those. But whenever I have anything like joggers and I put them in the wash and sometimes they slip into the tumble dry by accident, they shrink. So if I have pyjamas or anything like that and I buy them from anywhere, but retail um, pyjamas, the next time I've washed them, they're like halfway up my leg and it does my head in. So I put four inches on that and they've washed beautifully and they're perfect. So I don't mind having a bit of extra length in them if I if I have to, because I'd rather have that than be short. So I'm super happy with that and I'll do the same thing again. And the size 14 was absolutely perfect on me. So jobs are good. And so yeah, Marlowe sweater. So this is my Marlowe sweater. Cardi, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I made this with fabric. So it's a bit not that I am this very well ever. Um, I made this with this lovely cozy fabric in navy that I got from Frumble Fabrics, and it's got loads of little tiny flecks all over it. And the reason I decided to make this is um the testers on the Marlowe sweater, when you saw the pictures, there was a picture of a navy one with brown buttons, and I fell in love with it. 
And I was like, I've got something in my wardrobe that would, in my stash, that would work well with that. So, and I thought it will kind of go with the hoods and pants as well, as like a set. So I thought, why not, using what I've got in my stash, get on with it. So that's what I did. I didn't have the buttons and finding 30 uh, millimetre buttons that are nice is hard work. It's hard work. I must have spent forever doing it. And in the end, I ended up with a dashed Amazon purchase, which wasn't ideal. But anyway, I am still on the hunt for beautiful 30 millimetre buttons. Um, yeah, it was a really, really nice, quick, simple, easy make. So suited with that. Um, I made a size 12, which is a size down from what I should have been. And again, I used the finished garment measurements. And the reason I did that is... I didn't want it too oversized. It is um, described as an oversized um, sweater. Um, and I didn't want it too oversized. And I wanted it to kind of go with my hoods and pants. So that's the reason that I did that. I lengthened the sleeves by two inches. And I lengthened the body by two inches. And that's where it went wrong. Okay. So I'm really happy with the length, um, increasing it by two inches, the um, shorter version. Um, but, stupidly... When I cut the band out, I forgot to add those inches on, didn't I? So when I was putting the band on, I'm like, why is it not reaching? I don't understand what's happening. Getting into a rage about it. And then I sat down and I was like, oh my God, I didn't increase my band by the two inches on one side, two inches on the other. So I was four inches out. I didn't have enough fabric. One of them. So after I'd panicked thrown a glass of wine down my neck, chilled out a bit. I worked out how to rectify it. So what I've ended up doing is putting another panel in the back, if you can see there. So centrally, I cut the two thingies that were originally joined together and I just put another panel in the back. And I don't think anybody be any the wiser. I'll just wear my hair like this all the time if I'm wearing it. Then no one will know, will they? <laughs> see through a hair thing, it mask. And I also put in um, a new label that I've got from uh, Little Rosy Cheeks, which is gorgeous and says I am unique, which I am, which we all are. I think it ties in quite nicely with the brown buttons as well. So, yeah, I've got plans. Um, if you've seen my February plans, you'll see that that is in my future again very soon. Those and the true bias on some pants. Oh, yes. Right. Knackered, knackered after all that. I also made a pact with myself, didn't I, that I thought I would break within the first month, but I haven't. Oh, yeah. So the idea was that I was going to use up some scrap fabric to do a project every month to try and use up some of the scrap fabric or some of the fat quarters that I always get from my So Hayley Jane subscription box because I don't do a lot of craft sewing, if that makes sense. Um, it's all garment making at the moment. Um, so I thought, no, try and set yourself a bit of a, a target to do something every single month where you have to use up some of the fat quarters or some scrap fabric that you've got. And I made these. I'll drop one on the floor one moment. Musical interlude. And I made these little things. Oh, they're so cute. So they are little lavender pillows. I mean, obviously, it's not smell vision is it? But I can smell them and they smell beautiful. So I used up the fat quarters from my last So Hayley Jane box, um, which were absolutely gorgeous and all in really similar colourways. And I made a few little ones and they were super easy to make. And then I used um, some trimming that I'd got from an old So Hayley Jane box that's just been sat in my stash for a while with these little tiny cream pom-poms on and then wrap them up. Now, I cut these at about, I think it was three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And they were just dead simple to, to sew up and then pull together. And they look really cute, don't they, together? So I thought these would be really nice, little add-on presents as well. So you give somebody a gift maybe for Christmas or for Mother's Day or for their birthdays and pop a couple of these in. Wang them in your knick-knack drawer. So you smell lavender. Sounds good to me. So I've just got to decide who's going to get these. But I'll definitely make some more of these. I had some dried lavender already because I'd thought about doing little lavender hearts, um, which I still might do. 
um but i bought some lavender bud dried lavender buds basically off ebay a while ago and i had them in a bag in my cupboard so super happy with that I did it. It's January. January make and I did it. I did it. Will it continue? We shall see. I can tell you I've already done something for February. So that's two out of 12 months already, isn't it? Quite impressed with myself. Um, so that's it. That was it for January, which is quite a lot, isn't it? So I've got a few plans for February. I've hardly sewn a thing up so far for February. So I may fail dramatically on that one, but we shall see. And I know in my last video at the end, I also chatted to you about a challenge that both myself and Sam from Frugalissima had set up. And we've had an amazing response from people on this challenge. So what started out as a really small collab idea between myself and Sam has become something huge. And we are so excited about it, it's ridiculous. Um, for anybody who hasn't seen my previous um, video, um, it is a challenge called Frugal Frocks 2021 and the idea is anybody can join in, anybody. And all you have to do is you have to find a free dress pattern, use some fabric from your stash, or as long as it's frugal we don't mind, so it could be an old duvet or anything like that, as long as it doesn't cost you anything. Um, make your dress up in the month of March and then reveal it on Instagram on March the 31st with the hashtag frugalfrox2021 and tagging both myself and Sam in and I'll put the details below in the description box and there are going to be prizes to be won so I've been dead cheeky I've asked loads of companies if they will donate and sponsor our challenge and the response has been fantastic so there will be prizes to be won so from Sunday the 14th Valentine's Day we will be kicking off with the first of our amazing team of bloggers that have decided to join in this challenge with the first thoughts and ideas video. So there's over 40 um, vloggers going to be involved in this challenge as well. And each day from the 14th of February, right the way through to, I think it's the 20 something of March, there will be one blogger per day talking about their ideas on what pattern they might make, what fabric from their stash they may use, etc. So it'd be really good if you could join in um, and pop over to each of these channels as it comes through. And I will be um, publishing that data, hopefully at the end of this video, if I learn how to put a proper video thing in, you know what I'm like with technology anyway i will give it a go um so yeah every day you'll be able to pop to a different channel have a look at what their ideas are hopefully get some really good inspiration and join in with us no pressure don't have to if you don't want to but i think we're all in a situation where there's not that much going on at the moment so it's quite nice to do something as a community together um there will be loads of stuff coming up on instagram i will be um divulging what some of the amazing prizes are once everything's confirmed and yeah and i'll be updating every day with who's uh, got a video coming out that day so yeah tune in um i'll put some details below and hopefully on the video thingy head over to my instagram page for some more information go see sam as well at frugalissima and um, yeah go have some fun go have some fun anybody can join in um bit of fun i think i think that's what we we definitely need isn't it at the moment so the lockdown three and it's open internationally as well so some of the prizes we've got um are okay for international winners as well if you're to win the prize and we have got international vloggers involved so yeah it's uh it's open to everybody and um yeah hopefully with times like this it's not going to cost us any money as well which is a bonus isn't it so but we're not we're not the police we're not going to come around to your house and check out if you've used stuff you know we won't be doing that so you'll be all right um if you've got any questions though you can always ask myself or sam and we'll be happy to help so yeah happy sewing everybody and let's get this challenge started and i'll see you soon in my next video take care bye